Welcome to another message from C3 Mumbai. Coming up. It is not in me. It is in God. Every gift that you have is in Him. In Him I live and breathe and have my being. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. How are you? G'day mates, ladies and gentlemen, we say in Australia, how's it going? And you say good, if you don't know what I mean, that's the person next to you, so the sky is real. No, don't do that. No. <laughs> don't do that. Oh, fantastic. Hey, uh, it's good to be here. Who was with us on um, Thursday night? Uh, yeah, fantastic. Who felt a uh, tangible presence? of God. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. You see it right now. God is here right now. The moment we began to come into this room, He came in with you. It's good. You see it. His power is here. His presence is here. His holy presence is here. His tangible presence is here. If you reach out, you can touch Him. The Bible says you should taste and see that the Lord is good. So there is a spiritual taste. You can taste him. The Bible says that he is like honey in the rock. So you can actually taste the honey, the sweetness of God, if, you, if you're sensitized to the Spirit of God. Hebrews says that those who are the sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. So you can actually feel him. You can feel his presence. You can, you can sense his closeness. You can actually feel his heartbeat. You can experience the oxygen of heaven if you sensitize yourself to it. And some of us are so... Uh, and so inclined to our physical senses that we actually never develop our spiritual senses. And so we're told to exercise to reason of much use, and it says in the book of Hebrews, to reason of much use, let your senses be exercised to find and discern that which is of God and that which is not of God. It's like going to the gym. Uh, the only way you get muscles like mine is to not attend the gym. <laughs> but when you attend the gym, you finish up with muscles like shakers. No. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I had a deal the other night, I felt great, and I didn't develop. Um, so those muscles are developed by reason of much use. Uh, you will never get uh, spiritually in tune through not exercising the things of the spirit. And people are looking and they say, I can't feel God, I can't sense Him, I don't know where He is, but they're not using the spiritual senses that are being given to them. Mm. He's everywhere. Who knows if God is everywhere? Yeah. But you know, He manifests His presence only where you are sensitized to Him. He's everywhere, but not everyone can feel Him. He's everywhere, but not everybody can experience and sense what He's doing. So I hope and pray, my prayer is this morning, by the time we finish here, that you would uh, have your senses exercised a little bit, which uh, are your spiritual senses that you'll be able to understand, see and know what God is doing. Mm. <clears throat> That's my desire. The Apostle Paul says, I come to you that I could stir up something within you. Uh, not that you would say that uh, Pastor Rod is a great preacher, although I am, <laughs> and humble. And humble uh, but I'm not as good as Ryan yet, but I'm working on it. You know. uh, but you would say, I met with God. Yeah. I, I sent something of Him. I felt his kingdom, and the most pleasing thing that any pastor can do, or any minister of God, would be to leave a deposit in the atmosphere of the church and the perfume which is of heaven. And that would be my desire, my heart's desire. Wendy wants to say hello to you. My wife, um, she was preaching this morning in our church. There she is, our beautiful uh, Wendy. She's on our stage at 3 C3 Jubilee. And uh, that's our new uh, C3 logo, by the yeah. way, behind us, which looks really funky. I like that. She's dressed so well. She's so cute. <laughs> I, I looked at that. She posted me that photo. Actually, my daughter posted that photo to me this morning while Wendy was preaching on Running with Giants. That was the title of a message. And I just wanted to listen to that message so I could probably preach it here. <laughs> she's a great preacher. She is a good preacher. She has a prophetic gift, a prophetic anointing on her that brings great insight into the Word of God. And I always, I feel sometimes like that guy that, um, you know, that American Indian who sends up those big clouds of smoke and they actually talk on the other mountain. You know that, uh, yeah. And they talk to each other through big clouds of smoke. 
and then they talk back uh, with another big cloud of smoke, you know, they're talking on mountains. And one Indian saw what some other Indian saw a big cloud of smoke one day, and he said, I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> um, anyway, you'll, you'll get it later. Uh, uh, Wendy is like that sometimes. She says some great clouds of smoke, and I say to myself, I wish I hadn't said that, you know. Thanks, Kate and Simon, for putting that up. That was fantastic. Yeah. Did, oh, Richelle, it was the center of the moment. I had it in my phone, I thought she said to say hello, and I thought, what better way than to do it like that? So, praise God. I believe there's some people here this morning who were here on Thursday night. They just need to tell us what happened that got unlocked for them in either the way of revelation or of healing. And uh, if you just like put up your hand and say, you know what, I got healed on Thursday night and I actually know that I did. Yeah, what happened, love? Tell me. Come up here and quickly tell me. I just want to get some testimony happening. This is how we build faith in the service. Okay, so what happened? Why did you come from prayer? I'll hold the microphone because I know some of these people that preach us here and I just go, ah, oh, ah. Oh. So, what happened? Yeah. Every time I wake up and I go to sleep, or if I would lie down on my ankles, and if I would press it. So, when I went home, it didn't hurt. Friday morning, it didn't hurt. I didn't really check, but then Saturday morning, I was checking and it started, like I was searching for the thing to make sure it's not there. I didn't really feel it, and I was thinking maybe there's just a slight trace, but I would not call it pain. And today morning I checked it again, and it's not her pain. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, totally and complete healing, never to return again. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Amen. Amen. Simple Amen. as that. Amen. Come on, let's give a lot of big hands for you. Oh, one more. That yeah. one. I didn't know it was short, but I didn't know that I should stand and look at it because it's like, yeah. But now when I stand, I feel firm and I feel that I can feel my right shoe more. I wouldn't feel it earlier. Wow. So I feel like That's yeah. awesome. She didn't know she had it. She used to stand yes. like one hip, feeling the hip was sort of out. We just prayed and then there's an alignment happen and now you can actually feel your shoe and you put in that is My mom used to always ask me why I stand straight and I didn't stand good because she's not having shoes. So now when I told her, she said, so now you'll be straight and I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like, wow, that's a good one. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, works in the atmosphere of the miraculous and then the thanksgiving. Uh, and he loves to show off. Uh, Holy Spirit loves to communicate the power of God and the love of the Father by just showing off how good. Anybody else? Yes. How did you go, young man? Why don't you now come here quickly. You had uh, asthma in your lungs and you had difficulty breathing. So what's what's going on now? Now, at that time, I had very like, slight wheezing, but as soon as I went, the wheezing also went, and asthma like. You can only tell the difference after a period of time. But this is soon as I went to Wow. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Wow, there's some stuff going on in your life, man. Lord, touch him, Father. Signs and wonders that follow him every day of his life, Father. In the realm of the miraculous, in Jesus' name. Such a good man. <laughs> What a great uh, articulator this. How old are you? How old are you? Well, wow, 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 wow. 12 years old. I wish I had been able to speak like that kind of well. <laughs> and I suppose you could speak Hindi and Maharashtra and tell the girl and six other languages. You know? <laughs> I have enough trouble with English. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else who knew on Thursday night that something had physically happened and they're here today? Yeah? I don't believe that, yeah. Yeah, but that'll do for the moment. That's okay. That's fine. That's good. They're pretty, they're pretty cool things. God yeah. wants to show off, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. He does. I think God is going to unlock some things this morning. And I I love Pastor Ryan and Rachel. They're great people. And I figure Ryan preaches great and awesome sermon. 
every Sunday. And so I'm not going to preach this morning as such, because when you've got the best preacher in the house, why kind of just spend? I felt I wanted to just exercise my gifts here this morning and uh, uh, move in that area, uh, just moving in what is my thing. Is that okay? Or my thing. Yeah. yeah. Good. And I think that will leave an impartation and impression of the spirit that is probably better than any sermon I can preach. However, I do want to bounce out a couple of scriptures. The first one is Acts chapter 2, verse 17, if we can just flip that up on the screen. And it's a reference to, um, uh, this is a reference to the prophet Joel. And uh, and uh, my son Joel says to say hello to everybody who knows him as well. Hey, Joel. And, uh, yeah, she's a good boy. He's just opened his second business in Bali, in uh, Gili, Gili, Taiwan, which is not of... Um, of Bali, he's doing real well. So, anybody knows him? Uh, yeah, there you go. So let me look at where's this thing gone? On to some other thing. There is Holy Bible. So open your Bibles this morning. If you've got your Bible, and uh, to Acts chapter two, uh, verse seven. It's on the on the board. So um, <coughs> you will find that. This reference is from another scripture in the book of Joel and uh, is brought out by the Apostle Peter in its trying to attempt to explain what was going on in the day of Pentecost. And uh, he said, after there was a rushing wind, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he comes up after in response as everybody says, what is going on? And he says, uh, this is that which the prophet Joel spoke about. He said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will begin to do something that they haven't begun to do before. They'll begin to prophesy the word prophesies to speak the words of God. And your other people there, young men, shall see visions, and old men will begin to dream dreams. Now, these things of prophecy and visions and dreams are what I call the language of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a language that we speak in India uh, in different areas, uh, might be uh, Hindi, might be Telugu, might be Maharashtra, uh, might be some tribal language. Uh, but there is a language that comes from heaven mm. uh, that we can speak. And it's the, the language of prophecy and the language of visions and the language of dreams. And I believe that we need to unlock these gifts of heaven. We need to unlock this language of heaven. I can't speak much. Uh, of your local Hindi dialect, I know Acha, uh, Ryan's talking how to say cello, uh, Siga. <laughs> I'm still working on Danny Bug, which I don't think it's said like that, it says like Danny, like um, Danny, but I think it's Tani or something, but I, you know, I, look at, I try to say it, people look at me and go, what? And then I said something the other day, and Richard said, don't say that like that. <laughs> it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean something really bad. Um, so it takes away to go to the really bad place, you know. Um, but anyway, so so I'm not good at that language. Uh, what do you uh, And there's an inflection in the language. There's, there's a pronunciation in that language. You've got to learn it, and it's a learned procedure. And these things of heaven, the prophecy, the vision, and the dream, they're a language. They're actually a spiritual language, and not many know how to unlock it. Mm. And very few can actually unlock it in the church. And I believe within this room of, of, of whatever we have here, 70, 80 people, Ryan's probably going to count. He's a details guy, he'll probably tell me exactly how many heads and children and everything, babies and mice are even here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so he's, he's a detailed person. And so. But I, I think there's something in here this morning that God wants to unlock uh, in every soul. And I believe that every one of you, every head, every man, woman, and child, every mouse in here has a dream. Mm. There is a dream. There is something inside of you. There is a prophecy. There is a vision or a dream within you. And it could be something that's repetitively coming to you. I believe that the, when the prophet Joel uh, released this dynamic word from heaven, he spoke before Jesus, mm. probably hundreds of years before Jesus, and then here comes Peter 
in the day of Pentecost, and he's actually saying that which the prophet Joel had said would be released. And he was declaring that in this day there would be a, a, a revelation of an understanding of the language of heaven that would actually begin to bring such release and unlock to the world in which we live. I, I've heard that uh, Muslims in Middle Eastern countries having dreams of Jesus coming to them. And it's yeah. actually in their Quran that Jesus would come to them as the Messiah in their dreams. It's actually written in their own script. And He uh -huh. is coming in that manner to them. But there's no one ready who is flowing with the gifts of the Spirit to unlock that and give them a revelation of that. Mm. Good. But I believe the church needs to move into a realm where they can actually begin to do that because there's whole nations that are dreaming right now. There's whole nations which are having revelations right now that they don't know what it means. And the church is the hope of this world that can bring the unlock codes to these dreams, revelations, prophecies, and, and visions. If I asked this morning, have you had a recurring dream that comes to you when you sleep? If you have had one, put your hand up. Okay, there's a few. Have you had a vision of something that you know God wants you to do, whether you're awake or asleep, and you know it just won't go away? Let me see your hand. There's a few of you. Has anybody spoken as they've come into your world, a believer with a particular gifting on their life, and spoken some words over you which you thought were prophetic or prophesied over your life? Let me see your hand. Cool. So there's a few more in that area. Those things need to be unlocked. There's unlock codes on them. They need to be unlocked. Otherwise the prophecy, the dream or the vision stays resident but unlocked. Mm. It's like having the key to the safe and you know inside of that safe there are riches beyond your dreams and yet you've got the key but you've never put the key into the safe and cracked the code. And I believe this Visions, dreams, and prophecies are the code breakers that will release so many great things in your life. Come on. I hope to do that this morning. I hope yeah. to unlock that. I want. To, I think I'm carrying something in my in my uh, very being that can do that. If you turn to Genesis chapter 41, you find this incredible story, and I want you to go through in your own time. It's the story of Joseph, the the dream breaker, the dream code breaker. Now, I want, to, I want to just say this before this story took part, place in Genesis 41, verse 1 to 4, 1 to 5. Uh, this guy, Joseph, came into the land of uh, captivity uh, where Pharaoh became his king. He came into that land at 13 years old. Young man, you're 12. Can you imagine that he came in to captivity one year? later than this little boy here and he was cast into a pit by his brothers who despised his dream come on there will be those who will despise your dream yeah there will be those who will despise your vision your prophecy they'll want it they'll be hungry for it they'll be eager for it they'll, they'll be jealous of it and because of the dream that he had he had a, he had a dream that his brothers would bow down Remember the dream? He had the sheaves, he saw the sheaves of wheat and they were bowing down to his wheat and they despised him and put him in a pit at 13 years old and sold him into slavery. From there we say, uh, you know, he, he went into slavery, he went into Potiphar's house where he was accused wrongly by, uh, he was trying to be seduced by Potiphar's wife and he was thrown into prison and in the prison there he, uh, he actually became one of the highest uh, servants in the prison. You see, your dream might go through some pain. Hello? Yeah. Your vision might go through some pain. Your prophecy might go through some pain. But don't change the theology about God just because you go through some pain. People have people die and their loved ones die. Or it doesn't work out the way you thought it was going to work out. But God is still on the throne. Yeah. Don't change the theology. He is still on the throne. He's still with you. And He's still for you. He is not against you. He's yeah. still the apple of his eye. Yeah. Joseph went through from 13 years old into the pit, into the prison, and then he went to the palace. The word pit, I, I have an acronym for the word pit. 
PIT, pastor in training. <laughs> if you're going through the pit, if you're going through the challenge, you're just getting ready for the greater. You're just getting ready for the palace. That's all. Come on. You need someone to unlock it for you. And so it says of this young boy, he's now 30 years old. There's a long journey between the 13 and the 30. <laughs> yeah. Can you say amen? Amen. <laughs> we want it yesterday. We live in a world of, uh, of instant. Get on the get on the rickshaw, take me to blah blah. Go take me to Bandra, take me to somewhere. Get me, and we want it now. You know, we live in the microwave generation who wants to dip, 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 and go. We we did we we complain now that the telephone doesn't connect, but we have to get you know on the internet we have to wait more than three milli nanoseconds and uh, we feel oh look it's a dial up speed was better than this. You know? so, give me back my four eight six computer, my my Pentium one, you know, was faster than this camel. Uh, you know, we live in this generation that wants it now, baby. We want it fast. But there's a journey between the 13-year-old captive to the 30-year-old king. Yeah. yeah. There's always a journey. And so this journey starts with this young boy who has his own dream about what God would do for him. Your dream will always be unlocked by what you can do for others. Wow. Hello? Yeah. We think my dream is about me me, 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 and myself. But Jesus died on the cross, which was one single stick of wood, and was crossed out on the second axis. He crossed out the I life and said, let's have enough life. Yeah. And so this young man, although he had a dream, and many of you might have a dream, a vision, a prophecy inside of your heart resonant, but Jesus comes... And he takes you on a journey. And as he did with Joseph, it says, we next find Joseph. And you can look at the story, the whole, the whole story I can't do for you this morning. So I'm going to be a storyteller. Is that okay? Yeah. So in the next scene, we find him out of Potiphar's house. We find him in the prison. And in the prison, he becomes an assistant to the prison warder. It says he becomes an assistant to the chief executioner, which is a really cool job. <laughs> Cut people's heads off. Whoa, fantastic. That's that's like, oh, you know, I'm doing stuff that's just below me, you know. Uh, I, I gotta wait. I'm, a, I'm on the palace uh, journey, you know. I'm, I'm on the palace bus. I'm, you know, I'm not the assistant to the executioner. He's a bad guy. You might think your, your boss is an executioner. But as you assist him, you become the chief assistant to the boss who's the executioner. You say, I don't have anything to do with that dude. He's such a bad dude. But you know, it's a journey that you're on with your God. Yeah. Good. It's got nothing to do with the executioner. It's a journey that you're on with your God. Yeah. Good. And so he just serves him with all of his might. And, and I think sometimes as young people, we just want our own deal. But as we serve our masters with all of our minds, the Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Don't do it half heartedly. Don't serve in your business. Uh, half heartedly. Don't serve your partner with half heartedness. Don't serve your boss with half heartedness. And you're on the way to the palace. Yeah. And so he serves and he gets one day a dream breaking code. Because he's a dream breaker. He gets the code for two other guys who are in prison. And they are assistants to the Pharaoh. He says to one of them, you're going to go straight to the Pharaoh's house. He said to the other one, you're going to lose your head. Uh, that's bad news to bring to someone. It? <laughs> like, happy days. Oh, I feel really good about that. <laughs> so he's not afraid to bring truth where truth is needed. He doesn't skirt around the issues. So sure enough, and uh, the guy gets out, the baker gets out. The, actually, the cupbearer lo the baker loses his head. And the cupbearer goes straight to the Pharaoh's house. And the cupbearer says, you know, when, when, I, when I get to the house of the Pharaoh, I'm not going to forget you. Yeah, anybody, anybody heard anybody say that? You can depend on me. I mean, I'm your, I'm your next break. I'm your next lunch paycheck. You know, I'm the man. You can trust me. You know, like, I'm with you, man. Well, you and me are like brothers. Now, two years, he stayed in that prison. And it says the king's cupbearer forgot all about him. You know, people will forget about you. 
No matter what they say, people will forget about you. But we don't, I thank God, I love people, but I don't put my trust totally in people, I put my trust totally in God. That my, my God, my King is my toe breaker, really, ultimately. Amen. Can, can you come with me this morning? I'm feeling a little resistance on that point. You know, can you trust Him? He's with you. If He's with you, the Bible says, who can be against you? Yeah. I didn't even intend to preach this morning, but there's a preaching anointing in the house, so let's go with it. And so, and so it says that one day the king, the pharaoh, has a dream. Has a dream about groups of seven. Seven years of plenty, seven years of lack, mm. seven years of cows, seven years of skinny cows, seven years of fat cows, seven years of wheat, seven years of skinny wheat. One consumes the other. He is totally, completely confused. So he calls all of, all of the sorcerers, all the priests of all the religions, and says, tell me what the hay is going on here. He, that was a bit of Egyptian talk. <laughs> I don't get what's going on. He's totally, completely perplexed. And then what's more, he doesn't have it once, but he has it twice, so it's a recurring dream. And then what happens is, at the fullness of time, the cupbearer remembers. There's a trigger point where God brings a remembrance to this cupbearer. He forgot all about it. But in the fullness of time, there's a trigger point. There's always a trigger point in God's timing. We want it in our time. He says, I don't work in your time. I work in my time. Come on. My chronograph is not a, a, a titan, it's, it's not a Swiss watch, it's my time, and it ticks wherever I want it to go. Yeah. But it will tick, and the fullness of time comes about. And the cupbearer says, I remember a guy in prison, one he said would be released to serve in the Pharaoh's house, the second one would lose his head, and he was absolutely correct. And the Pharaoh says, bring him to my house straight away. He sat rotting in a prison, but it's time. Tell me right now, it's time. It's time. It's time, it's and time. it's my time. It's my time. Because God's going to make it my time. Come on. And so He comes. But before He comes, I love this part. It says that if you can actually can go on, can you go to the next verses and just just kind of scroll through verse one to five, and you can have a little read. It comes the second time. And then verse Wait, 3, on. verse 4, you can go like 3 and read it there. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Suddenly it's time. The fullness of time. And I like this. It says, when the Pharaoh called him, remember the, the Pharaoh is an Egyptian, and Joseph is a Hebrew. He never forgets who he is in a system that wants you to forget who you are. There's a worldly system that wants you to forget who you are. You're a son and daughter of God. You carry in with you, within you the code breaking of heaven because you're actually a citizen of heaven. So he comes, but before he gets, uh, he gets ready, he gets relevancy. Thank God we have a church C3 Mumbai that's relevant. To the community which is trying to reach. Are you with me? So what does he do? He, he actually, because he's a Hebrew, a Hebrew does, as, an, as the Sikhs say, he is an uncut. He is an uncut Hebrew. He's not a cut Sikh, he's an uncut Hebrew. He doesn't shave his hair because he's under covenant code with God. But the Bible says he makes himself relevant and he shaves his head like an Egyptian. And a lot of trouble with sometimes in the church we're trying to unlock codes for people but we look so different and our language is so different that we don't know how to relate to them. But this guy says that he cut his head. He became an Egyptian in an Egyptian context and I believe he went on to put on some good old Egyptian makeup. <laughs> I'm a Christian. I don't wear makeup. Don't eat gum. Don't drink. I don't hang out with anybody that does. You become irrelevant. Yeah. But this guy becomes irrelevant. He, he becomes relevant. He walks into the Pharaoh's house. He's totally accepted. 
as an Egyptian. They know he's a Hebrew. He's a Hebrew on the inside. It doesn't matter what you're out on the outside. He's a Hebrew on the inside. He's a covenant person on the inside. Too many people are trying to be covenant people on the outside. Not realizing that where the most important thing is is the covenant relationship you have with God, which can never be altered, never be changed, whether in the prison or the palace. You're still a covenant person. And he interprets the unlock codes of the dream of the Pharaoh, and the Pharaoh exalts him to the highest place in the land. He said, no one else can do this. Your unlock codes that God has given you will always exalt you to the highest positions in the land. If you haven't yet reached those highest potential locations, it's because you've got to go and sensitize yourself to the Spirit of the Lord to find out the language of heaven. It will always exalt you. He who humbles himself will always be exalted. The problem with most of us, we, we want to do God's job and we want to exalt ourselves. And he says, no, you've got to humble yourself. We get that a little upside down. When you humble yourself, he'll exalt you. When you exalt you, he will humble you. <laughs> oh dear. Some of us are getting it the wrong way around. He will exalt you when you humble. You know, when you fall on him, he won't fall on you. So he this guy doesn't mind being the person. He doesn't mind the processes of God. He's not shaking his fist at God saying, What the what the heck are you doing? Or in the Hebrew, what the hell are you doing? He's not shaking his fist at God. Saying, I didn't deserve this. I didn't sign up for this. This was not the Christianity that I served up for. I got difficulty, I got heartaches, I'm in the prison. What the heck? What's going on? What, don't you know what you're doing? He humbles himself. And in due season, God exalts. Is this working for you this morning? Yeah. It's working for me. And uh, so there you go. So he calls Joseph. And I love this. They brought him quickly out of the dungeon. You know, a lot of Christians... They kind of, uh, God calls them so they drag themselves to, you know, ah, oh, you're coming, you know. He quickly changed his clothes, came to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, Joseph, I've had a dream and there's no one you can interpret, but I've heard it and said of you that you can understand the dream and interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, I love this, underline this in your Bible. Highlight, put it in yellow, sticky pad, whatever. It is not in me. They're right there. Oh, I am the good who everything is in me. It is not in me. It is in God. Every gift that you have is in Him. In Him I live and breathe and have my being. In my dream I stood and bang and He tells me, tells the dream. Tells the dream. This morning I'm here to unlock some dreams. I'm here, I'm here this morning to unlock some vision. I'm here this morning to unlock some prophecy. And I think this will just release you to another level. Now, bro, I want a minstrel. Where's my man? Where's my shaker man? Shaker man. The great man. Shaker. Give me some atmosphere. Shaker. I've preached enough. I think you've got it. you got it? Getting on Sometimes you just go to learn how to stop. Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit. Let's just pray this with our hands and up to Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father. C3 Mumbai is a church in the heart of India's commercial capital where a diverse group of people brought together to worship God and to pass on the hope of salvation by grace that we freely receive. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram or tweet us on our handle at C3Mumbai.